Hello, boys and girls. Undertaker Freak 1127 here, and I really hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but it's probably news you already know. There are a great number of groups out there in this country that are trying to limit what you can read, write, limit what you can see on the internet, and limit what you can watch on TV and listen to on the radio. I know it's very sad that in a country like this, it has something like the First Amendment, we still have groups like this trying to clean and sanitize things. And the major reason we have groups like this is because a main part of their rhetoric, a very integral part of their rhetoric, is children. we got to clean this for children. we got to sanitize this for children. Children whose brains aren't fully developed enough to digest the material that we're trying to censor, they need to be censored from it. And they completely ignore one basic fact. If a parent is doing its job, a parent will sit a kid down when it sees something on television and say, you know what, this is Hollywood, this is acting, this is not reality. If a guy gets stabbed on TV, they're saying, "You know what? You, this is not what you do. This is not a. This is not the the appropriate response to something. This is what you do." A good parent would sit a kid down while they're watching TV, and if they see something, and if the kid asks a question about it, they would actually answer those questions. And if they have no questions, and all if a parent is worried about what they see on TV is actually going to translate into some wrongdoing in life, the parent can actually sit the little fucker down and say, "Hey, this is reality. That is not reality." That is reality. This is not reality. A lot of these these uh, groups, these specialized special interest groups, really overlook that fact. But unfortunately, these groups are still riding high, and they have the support of all the all the uh, these goofy little parents who want their kids to be a reflection of God or a reflection of themselves. Clean cut, little honest members of society. You know, you hear it all the time. Now, for those of you that have no idea what I'm leading into here, what I just talked about is very conducive to my point. Um, I just read a news article on CNN.com about the PTC, the Parents Television Council, wanting to get her latest video, Man Down, banned from BET, banned from television, because it depicts a man dead on the ground with a faint pool of blood just kind of sitting there by his head. Very graphic stuff. Like, I mean... When I saw that video, I, I was taken aback at how graphic that, that this man was sitting, you know, lying on the ground with his blood. I was like, you know what, if I had children and they were seeing that, I would act the same way too, you know? And then my better judgment kicked in and I said, oh, that's right. Like George Carlin says, it's all bullshit and it's bad for you. Now the bullshit here manifests itself in this idea that uh, children who see violent images on television are going to repeat these violent things. And they're, they're, they're half right, but it's stupid children that watch violent images on television are going to do those things in life. Children who don't have parents, who in their formative years, who kind of mold them and, and, and teach them right from wrong. That's a big thing right there. That's a big point there. Parents who can teach kids right from wrong, the kid will usually not go out and do wrong, a.k.a will not go and repeat what he just saw on TV in real life. It's just like those people that say guns kill people. The guns don't kill people. Fucking idiots with guns kill people. Just as stupid kids repeat the images they see on television. And kids who have not had that positive reinforcement from their parents. Okay? And yes, I am blaming parents for some of these instances in which kids have seen something in a video game or television and gone out and repeated it in real life. Yes, I am blaming parents. Now, another major point that, uh, by the way, the BET says that the, uh, the, they viewed the video and they said that it was up to standard for the broadcast, so they saw no problem with it. But these, the, these, these censorship groups, these watchdog groups who always want to get things cleaned and sanitized, what they really don't realize is they're not just cleaning things up for children, they're cleaning things up for everybody and to suit their own interests. That's the biggest thing that pisses me off right there. They're cleaning things up more, you know, they, they say they're doing it for children, but really they're cleaning things up to suit their own morals and interests. They are pressing their own morals and interests upon people who don't want them pressed on, okay? That is the major thing that I see wrong here. When you are a council like the Parents Television Council and, and, and you're trying to get something bad off television, what you are saying is, we think you're too stupid to make a decision for yourself, so we're going to let you know and tell you and advise you just what you can handle and just what you can watch. We're going to limit and regulate and control those things. That's what they're really telling you. It's all wrapped up with the whole children are watching rhetoric.
about that children are watching because our children are watching well you know what there is a thing called personal responsibility look it up there is a thing such a thing as personal responsibility and personal responsibility when it comes to not wanting your kids to uh, watch um, you know violent images or sexual things or not wanting them to listen to uh, what they consider irascible hateful music lyrics you know what you do with that you implement child blocks you don't let them purchase those things you don't buy that music for them instead you can subject them to your pussy little soft rock or new age uh, uh, melodic jazz crap and eh, don't get me wrong I like some jazz but most of these parents who are trying to make good, upstanding, moral kids usually bring home Rod Stewart or Barry Manilow and pump it into their kids' ears, thinking that's going to make them an upstanding citizen. Because if they listen to Metallica or if they listen to a satanic band like Slayer, they're going to become little heathens, little hellions, running across the landscape, killing this, raping that, doing all sorts of unsavory things. And that is that that is largely... The mindset of a lot of these PTC people, they think if a kid watches something or hears something bad, they're going to go off and do that. I'm coming back to that for a reason, because personal responsibility plays a large, large role in this entire thing. If you don't want your kid to watch something, if you don't want your kid to listen to something, don't let them watch it. Don't let them listen to it. Okay, do you see where I'm going this year? It's a pattern. It goes on and on with, with all forms of media and entertainment. If you don't want them looking at something, don't let them look at it. Be, be the responsible parent that you think you're being and don't let them watch it. So my major question is this. It's a question I'm asking all of you. Why, given all this information, given all these points I made, do we still have groups like the PMRC and, uh, and, and groups like the PTC, the Parents Television Council, and the, these groups trying to get violent video games banned off the shelves, like Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row 2, trying to get all the, and Call of Duty, all these violent video games and violent images, trying to get them banned. Why do we still have these groups? <clears throat> That's what I've been trying to figure out, because a parent knows, a parent supposedly knows what's best for his child. So the parent, when they're out shopping, they can skip right past the explicit lyric sticker things. They can buy them Barney and Friends Sings the Blues. Or they can buy them, you know, like I said, Rod Stewart or Barry Manilow or Celine Dion, okay? Or Whitney Houston. Or, you know, any little pussy boy, soft rock singer, songwriter, or band and pump it in their kids' ears. You know, parents have that personal responsibility. So why do we need these groups? Because parents are too lazy these days to make those decisions for their kids? Oh. Okay, so thanks to parents, we have groups like these who have to weasel their way into public interest to try and get things sanitized and scrubbed, not just for kids, but for everybody. And people will tell me, well, you know, if they put a, an advisory sticker on a CD, you can still buy it if you're over 18. I mean, come on, what's the big deal? There's no big deal with that. But when it comes to the media and things in print, a lot of groups try to get things taken out of print for the general public, not just children. There are a lot of instances in which things in the general public for all ages are cleaned and scrubbed and sanitized and shielded from our eyes. So it's not just about the little advisory stickers and have to be having to be 17 years old to go see an R-rated movie. You know, it's we don't need groups like this in this country. All they are doing is is taking into account their own agenda, their own personal morals, usually backed by Christianity, and imposing them on unwilling participants. But those unwilling participants, they're going to be easily bought and easily led by their uh, sensational rhetoric in the end. So what I'm saying to, uh, to this parent's television council is simple. Fuck you. It's as simple as that. I could have packaged the entire thing into a simple middle finger and a simple fuck you. But you know what? There's a lot about this issue that I could say. I could go further. So I may I may talk about this more in a live show like the one I'm probably going to have tonight at roughly 8 o'clock, 8.30. Possibly. Who knows? I will let you all know if I do. We will go much further into detail on this. But as far as I'm concerned, this PT, the only reason these, these, uh, these specialized interest groups exist in the first place is because there are enough of these moral... Christian faith-backed people who agree with everything they're doing and think that morality comes from clean, sanitized, Nick Jr., Disney Channel, family-friendly, God-oriented garbage. And it doesn't always work that way. Maybe, maybe you could actually give your children a choice every now and then. Or maybe, the suggestion I gave you earlier, 
let your children watch whatever the hell they want, and then you can explain to them which parts of those, the parts of the things they're watching are good and bad. Differentiate between reality and fiction. Differentiate between good and bad. Differentiate between all those extremes. But parents are too lazy, like I said, these days. So that's why we have councils, uh, councils and, and, and organizations and groups and constituencies like this. So what can you do? Undertaker Freak 1127. Have a good day, folks.